One of the maintaining features of an eating disorder that must be addressed in cognitive behavior therapy is the issue of undereating to the point where one becomes underweight. Many people with eating disorders undereat, and some do it for a sustained period of time and become underweight. However, this usually is temporary and only happens in a minority of people with eating disorders. It's usually interrupted when binge eating begins and the weight is regained. However, even though only a minority of patients with eating disorders are underweight, it is an important focus of CBT because being underweight has serious physical, mental, and emotional consequences, and some of the consequences make undereating and being underweight self-perpetuating. Being underweight is self-perpetuating in the sense that it keeps the eating disorder mindset firmly in place and makes the volume of the eating disorder voice louder. This keeps preoccupation with food and eating at the front of the person's mind and makes many efforts to challenge the eating disorder mindset futile. It's long been shown that psychotherapy and psychotropic medication is not effective in people who are underweight. There are four consequences of being underweight that make anorexia self-perpetuating once it begins. The first is that people who are underweight become more depressed and want to withdraw socially from other people. This cuts them off from relationships and other life experiences that might challenge their interest in weight and shape. The second characteristic is that they become indecisive and they have a tendency to procrastinate. Change is difficult in the first place, but increasing indecisiveness makes it less likely that someone will take the plunge and pursue recovery. Although the term anorexia means loss of appetite, few people with the condition really lose their hunger cues, and most are persistently hungry. This contributes to the preoccupation with food to the point where people who are underweight might even dream about food. Some view this as a character flaw. They see it as evidence that they are greedy and that they would become out of control in their eating behavior if they let go of their anorexia. Others may view it as evidence of their success and their willpower, or they might see it as a deserved punishment. Either way, the persistent hunger is interpreted in a way that intensifies the eating disorder mindset and makes strict dieting more likely to continue. Also, people who are underweight develop a condition called delayed gastric emptying that exacerbates their feelings of fullness when they do eat. This makes it very difficult and uncomfortable for them to restore their weight and increase the amount of food that they are eating on their own without the support of treatment. It also makes it less likely that they will trust the meal plan that a treatment team gives them and makes it more likely that they will see the meal plan as excessive and something that will cause them to gain unacceptable amounts of weight. People with anorexia tend to assume that their personality when they are underweight is a true reflection of their identity. In fact, their tendency to be socially avoidant or rigid and inflexible or anxious and insecure is likely a secondary effect of being underweight and their true personality will only be fully obvious when their weight is restored. One cannot fully recover from anorexia and maintain an unduly low weight. It is essential that weight is restored so that the maintaining mechanisms that keep anorexia self-perpetuating are interrupted. No amount of psychological counseling or no pill on the planet will cure someone of anorexia if they do not restore their weight. Most of the consequences of being underweight are reversible and will disappear when someone reaches a minimally safe weight, which tends to be a body mass index around 20. The two consequences of being underweight on the body tend not to be reversible. Those are damage to the cardiovascular system and on bone health. While there are a few people who can naturally maintain a BMI of 20 without restricting or restraining their diet, particularly people of Asian descent, most people cannot. And many people with eating disorders cannot tolerate a body mass index that low without a return of the eating disorder voice and the eating disorder mindset. There is a set of objections to weight regain commonly given by individuals with anorexia. The first is that their eating disorder provides them with a powerful sense of control that they do not want to give up. In this case, the definition of control must be explored. 
When I think of control, I think of having multiple choices and being able to choose between them freely. I also think of being able to choose differently given different circumstances on a different day. People with anorexia do not truly have the choice between restricting one day and nourishing themselves properly the next. This is not a free choice, but a choice made under extreme duress. Nourishing themselves results in extreme guilt, anxiety, and heightened feelings of fullness. Making food choices when you have anorexia is like making a choice with a gun to your head, and it is not until after successful treatment will the anorexia sufferer have true control over his or her eating. Others are reluctant to give up their eating disorders due to a sense that anorexia makes them special. With further exploration, however, the word special often points to receiving recognition, concern, shock, or attention from others. There are ways to achieve these goals that are not self-damaging, however, and that do not impair quality of life. Others report that they don't know who they would be without their eating disorders, as though the eating problem is a part of their identity. One's uniqueness as a person is actually masked by the effects of the eating problem. People who are underweight are much like any other person who is underweight. Their thinking becomes rigid and stereotyped in characteristic ways. Thus, one's true personality will not become apparent until a minimally safe weight is restored. Others say that the eating problem gives them an excuse for failing to achieve more or for not having reached the expectation of others. It is questionable, however, how much more the person would be achieving without the impairment and the partial disability caused by the eating problem. It is likely they would need less excuses without the eating disorder's interference in their lives. Others say that the eating disorder is familiar or safe. While it is always true that change is difficult, one of the consequences of being underweight is indecisiveness and a need for predictability. While not risking change may feel easier, it is questionable whether one can ever find true safety in something so dangerous as an eating disorder. Others may feel that they will be looked down upon as weak if they let go of their eating disorders, or as though it would be a sign of defeat. Most loved ones, however, will see the choice to recover as evidence of strength and courage. Eating normally is harder than capitulating to one's anxiety and giving in to the compulsion to restrict. Others fear that they will never stop eating if they abandon their restricting and restraining behavior. However, the reverse is actually more true. People who are restricting and restraining and are underweight are at the highest risk of binge eating and therefore losing control over their eating. The persistent hunger and preoccupation people with anorexia experience is not a character flaw, but a secondary effect of dieting and of being underweight. Others fear they will rapidly or continuously gain weight if they start eating normally. They will in fact be in more control of their weight if they learn to control their eating by recovering from their eating disorders. Weight gain is actually a slow and difficult process that requires eating beyond the point of fullness for a prolonged period of time. Others insist that continuing to eat as they do will ensure that they do not become obese. While there is some truth to this, there are many other and better ways to prevent obesity than anorexia. Most anorexics do not become overweight when they recover. Those most at risk of truly becoming overweight are those who never learn to eat normally and succumb to the binge eating that is likely to happen in a later phase of their disorder. Some insist that their body will become fatter if they eat more adequately. The truth is that individuals who are underweight are emaciated. As they restore their weight, they will go from emaciated to bony to scrawny to too thin and then finally arrive at thin. The word fatter just doesn't make sense in this context. You cannot become fatter if you are not fat to begin with. Also, individuals with eating disorders tend not to perceive the size and shape of their bodies to begin with. Others fear that they will become unattractive or even disgusting upon weight restoration. This results from an assumption that others have the same attitudes about size and shape as they do, or that others perceive their size and shape the same way that they do. This is an untested assumption that usually turns out to be false. Most people view a healthy BMI as attractive. Other people in the life of the person with the eating disorder will likely be relieved to see the person 
restore their weight. Attractiveness is also based on a variety of factors, some of which are not even physical. Whether our personality is engaging or not, for example, influences whether people continue to see us as physically attractive. In summary, weight restoration is a non-negotiably necessary part of recovery from an eating disorder if one is underweight. Regaining weight is difficult and uncomfortable but produces tremendous rewards. The volume of the eating disorder mindset will be reduced. Impairment and preoccupation will be reduced. Mood and pre productivity will increase. Body image distress will decrease. And the sufferer will be more able to benefit from psychological and pharmacological intervention. However, the rewards are not continuous and tend to arrive only at the very end of the weight restoration process. There is little payoff until a BMI of 20 is fully reached. Weight restoration is a difficult process and many patients lose steam along the way. Some make changes that are just too small. It takes an excess of 500 calories each day just to gain one pound per week. Playing it safe is not a helpful strategy when it comes to weight restoration. Others start out strong but see their efforts taper off over time. This is like being in a river that has a current working against you and rowing just as fast as the current. The result is that you remain still despite your effort and do not progress forward. Others are derailed by problems with overfullness. Delayed gastric emptying is a consequence of being underweight but does reverse after a few weeks or months of regular eating. Others lose their motivation to regain weight when they leave the therapy office falling prey to guilt and anxiety when they must eat alone and without support. As long as the eating disorder sufferer, sufferer has a low BMI, the mindset and the eating disorder voice are still active, resulting in a partial recovery at best or an unacceptably high risk of relapse. A low weight also creates the potential that accidental weight loss will occur through illness and will result in a dangerously low weight and make the eating problem self-sustaining again. Some people lose steam due to their belief that eating a weight gain meal plan is unhealthy. It is true that a period of high calorie intake is necessary to cause weight gain. However, once a healthy BMI is reached, the meal plan can be reduced. The health consequences of eating the standard American diet or a weight gain meal plan are nowhere near as serious as the health consequences of anorexia. Others feel that their stomach is protruding. This results from a variety of factors, and there is some truth to this. There is a temporary change in the shape and feel of the abdomen after eating. The stomach is a balloon, and it expands when it is full. Also, this is a consequence of being underweight and the muscle deterioration that results from malnutrition. Muscles that would normally hold in the stomach are weakened. Muscles in the back that provide structure and shape and round out the shape of the abdomen are missing and the stomach looks bigger by comparison. This perception is also exaggerated by the tendency of people with eating disorders to look down on their stomachs after eating. This causes them to make unfair judgments and biased comparisons because they cannot truly scrutinize other people's bodies from this angle and cannot notice this natural and temporary change in others after eating. Others want to stop gaining weight when they notice that their clothes are becoming tight and they must upgrade in size. Some tightness is normal after eating due to the natural and temporary change in the shape of the abdomen that happens when food is ingested. It can therefore be helpful to wear looser clothing when eating during the treatment process. It could also be that the clothes are just too small and that fitting into them was only possible from engaging into unhealthy behaviors. Perhaps you never should have fit into them at all. Keeping old clothes is a bad idea. It is helpful to burn bridges by throwing out sick clothes as they no longer fit or by donating them to charity. Other barriers can involve comments from other people. Even comments such as, you look so much healthier, can be twisted by the eating disorder mindset into a negative judgment about body shape. In reality, these comments are often meant to be encouraging and reinforcing. They often display others' relief that the eating problem is improving. Others feel better after regaining some weight and do not want to finish the job. Keep in mind that the full effects of weight regain are not achieved until a BMI of 20 is reached. 